this is big, man. You know I'm excited for this fight, not just for you, but for Al and for Kevin and everybody else. Talk to me, man. Eight days out. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, uh, he had a great training session uh, last night. Matter of fact, uh, the last couple of days have been phenomenal. Uh, that's going to be a great fight. Right now, he's in the he's in the right spot. I I, w- I wish the fight was this week. So, in terms of the first fight being of use to you, it was all the way back at UFC one sixty nine. With one sixty nine, when was the last time you threw on that first fight between Kevin and Al? No, I watched it just to uh, you know we watched to see a couple of things. That was a that was about a month ago, six weeks ago. All right. Ray Longo pretty tight lipped uh, here today, Kevin. <laughs> and, and, yeah. And, and listen, how, I thought we were beating well, I thought we were beating the crap out of the referees and judges today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we can always do that. Hey, uh, right. listen, what what kind of an improvement do you think Kevin Lee has made since their first fight? Look, I'm gonna say are, are you preparing what? for a different guy? It... Yeah, a hundred a hundred percent. Listen, yeah. He fought uh what did he fight? Ferguson for the interim title, uh He's got a lot of confidence. He fought a lot of good guys that uh, he was in there with. So, you know, the better people that you fought, the better you're going to, you know, you're going to get. So, um, you know, so, yeah, he's a, he's a different person just based on who he's been in that, who he shared that octagon with. So he's seen a lot of different looks. Um, he feels he should have won the first fight. So he's going to be very confident. And uh, he's going to he, he's going to get his wish. This is what he wanted for the last couple of years, so I hope he comes prepared. So when Al fought in April, he was training for Paul Felder. He was training for three rounds. Instead, he fights the most dominant force in the game, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and he does so for 25 minutes. Now this fight's scheduled for 25 minutes. You're the cardio king. I mean, what is different in terms of the conditioning component to that training camp versus this one that you've just gone through? Well, I mean, you just said it. This this time he actually trained for five rounds. And to give Al credit, he trained for three rounds and went five rounds with a killer. So, yeah. I mean, just give him the extra work. Look, he loves to fight. He's gonna be. He's not gonna have trouble with twenty five minutes. Yeah. No, I yeah, I don't worry about Al on that front. So it was a huge combat sports weekend, as we sort of said off the top. Ray, there were twenty five UFC fights. You had Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury in the boxing world. What were you watching this weekend? How many of those 25 UFC fights did you actually get your eyes on? I'm going to say I saw like 18 of the fights, and I saw the Wilder fight. I did see the uh, Wilder-Fury fight. All right, so talk me through Wilder and Fury, and then we'll get to the UFC stuff. Look, great great fight for the fans. Uh, Whoever scored that fight, uh, for Wilder, like 115 to 111 should be shot. Uh, if you go, Unbelievable. If you, Unbelievable. Yeah, if, you go, if you go round by if, if you go round by round, I mean, Fury was picking them apart, making them miss. Easy fight to score. Uh, but it gets tri- it gets tricky because he did drop them. And uh, and let me let me just give uh, give a shout out to that referee for not stopping the fight when he went down because. I never thought he'd get up, Kenny. I got to tell you, right. I never thought he was getting up. And not only did he get up, he went on to really win the remainder of the round. Yeah. So, I mean. I haven't seen anything like that. I mean, look, you know, this is he what I don't out. like about I mean, how does a guy go from being completely laid out like it's a crime scene to getting up and then crazy. going out and winning the rest crazy. of the round? It was crazy. If you, if, you, if you put that in a movie, they'd be calling bullshit. Crazy. And that's what I don't like. He didn't get rewarded for that effort. You know, it's like more. It's like Marab. He didn't want to tap. He wanted to win that fight. He knew he was winning that fight, and they still fucked him. And Tyson, and Tyson Fury got fucked. It's disguised a little bit because he got knocked down in two rounds, and one was pretty brutal. But he got up to win the remainder of that round. Seems yeah. like a real classic guy too. Couldn't have handled everything that happened after the fact any better. Un- unbelievable. All right, so in terms of the UFC stuff, we haven't yet touched on Kamaru Usman, and it's too bad there's not more shine on this guy, but when you have a, a bigger UFC fight night, essentially the night after, right, you do get lost in the shuffle. You, shuffle. you had Wilder and Fury, obviously. But, I mean, what else can you say about this guy? Everybody the UFC has put in front of him, he has dominated. A lot of 30-24s and 30-25s in his 
in his past, and, and obviously a 50-43, I believe, on this night against Rafael Dos Anjos. Any thoughts for me on the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaru Usman? I got to tell you, I think I, I told, I think I, I, I saw Kamaru about a year ago. I think he's the guy to, to look at. He, he deserves the shot, and uh, that's a dominant performance against a tough guy. And he's, like, again, anybody they put in front of him, he's, he's come through with flying colors. So he's the guy to watch. I think he's really good. All right, last thing before I try to get some predictions on the two title fights this weekend, Max Holloway, Brian Ortega, Valentina Shevchenko, Ioana Yeon, Jacek. So there continue to be these rumors and now reports of a potential 165-pound division in the UFC. I think Josh Thompson, uh, former UFC fighter, now commentator, BJPenn.com's Chris Taylor, I think, reporting some of these rumors as well, um, that welterweight would then be 175 pounds, and the UFC, in theory, would replace the flyweights with a 165-pound division. Now, here's our Ally Quinta, a guy who, who largely fights at his natural weight, what do you think about the possibility of a 165-pound division in the UFC? And a guy like Kevin Lee, who almost assuredly would move up as soon as that division was realized. No, I like it. I like the 165. I like the separation of 10 pounds. Uh, you know, Al, I think, would be perfect at 150. You know what I mean? I think that would be 145 is too much, but right, he makes right. 55 pretty easy. So, you know, yeah, not that he's he a guy kind fight of at between 65, divisions but too. I think... You know, I always thought 150 would be the best weight class for him. All right. Well, I cannot wait to see you in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, with a fat check in my hand for you. Yeah, You can add to that total total right now. Last week, I gave you the option to pick fights. This week, there is no choice in the matter. We need predictions. It is a pay-per-view. UFC 231, Holloway versus Ortega. Max Holloway, slight favorite right now against Brian Ortega. Valentina Shevchenko, 3-1 to one favorite against Joanna Young. Jay Check. You can win 50 bucks on either of these fights, both of these fights. I need something out of you this week. Who do you like in Toronto? Uh, humana, 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 humana. Oh, uh, come on, man. Uh, no, come on. I, I bribe a dus. I mean, I drive a bus. Uh, <laughs> So He's Holloway there. Ortega, you don't have even a lean for me. I mean, this is. I'm going to say radio. this. I, I'm going to go with uh, somebody said. I look. I like. I like Holloway. I like Ortega. I like them both. I'm going to have to go with Ortega. Uh, only because somebody told me Holloway didn't sound good in a couple interviews, so I'm kind of worried about him that in that respect. So, okay. I think I'm going to go with. Uh, I hope he's healthy, and I hope he makes it to the fight healthy, and. Uh, you know, whatever. I think I'm going to go with Ortega on this. All right, Brian T. City Ortega, the lean from Ray Longo. All right, my yeah. man, look forward to seeing you soon. We will talk to you next Monday uh, as your fight week begins. Thank you for the time. Sorry about the delay, and uh, no. we'll let you get back to it, my man. No, with you, with you two guys, there's no such thing as a delay. There's no yeah. such thing. Yeah. There's well, no <laughs> iron team. Are you kidding? <laughs> Hey, thanks, no man. Go get that Ray Longo minute sold. Can you go get All that right. segment sold already? Uh, Thank we you. got that. We got that going. I just hope we have a show. I think I know, I'm going to sell know, it. Right. There'll be can no we, show. All right. This guy will I mean, be riding around a, on actual... a battle bot. I don't know. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> we got a we got a real in Kenny. I think at this point. I think I think that's accurate. Oh, You're on. right. Maybe maybe we should find a home <laughs> for the podcast before we get the Ray Longo minute sold. All right, man. Thank cool. you. Uh, we'll talk to you in seven days. All right. Take it easy, guys. All right, there he is, Ray Longo, every week here on the Anakin Florian Podcast. Maybe. So this 165-pound division, I think all of us can agree that with the depth at 55 and 70, given the fact that those two divisions have for as long as I can remember, uh, with respect to the featherweights and the middleweights, but 55 and 70 have been ubiquitously regarded as the deepest and best UFC divisions. So to have that 15-pound gap, in between those two divisions just didn't make a lot of sense. And I think in 2018, I don't know if we're getting the cart before the horse, if that's the expression, but you know, maybe the promotion sort of thinks, man, we have all this talent. Maybe it makes more sense to do that there uh, as opposed to having a flyweight division. Kenny, uh, I know this hits close to home as a guy who competed, you know, below and above 165 pounds. What do you think about the possibility of, of a 165 pound division in the UFC? You know, Come January, essentially, if the if the rumors have any legs, John, I think I've been talking about this since uh, our MMA live days. You know, wow. I, I always thought that uh, you know the weight classes should be separated by ten pounds. 
uh, especially now in an era we where we have so many 155 pounders and 170 pounders and I think for the UFC if it seems like they're going the route of let's make the biggest fight possible. Let's put as many uh, championship belts on the line for, for posters as we can. Well, there's another weight class for for you. I, I mean, if they're doing it for women, they're adding 145 pound weight class, 125 pound weight class. Why not add one at 165 pounds? And and furthermore, I think you can make what at, at 195 pounds. Um, I think it should go 205. 195, 185, 175, 165, all the way down by 10 pounds. I think uh, that's something that the UFC can sustain. Um, and I think it makes uh, sense from a business perspective as well. I think the the type A guy in me wouldn't mind seeing that natural progression of every 10 pounds. I'm not sure, given where the light heavyweight top 15 is, that there's much of an appetite or at least a talent base for 195, but I could certainly be wrong there. Um, but in terms of the flyweights being killed, right, that would fly in the face of some of the argument to have these championship belts, right? I mean, there's enough talent at flyweight, in my opinion, to sustain a division. So if you're introducing 65ers, and again, this is just a rumor as we sit here on Monday, December 3rd, but I don't know that you need to kill the 25ers. So despite what we've heard, despite the fact that a lot of flyweights seemingly have lost their contracts, I'm just... I'm not sure we can just simply bury the flyweight division yet, um, but I guess we'll find out. We'll get some answers coming up uh, at UFC 233 in Anaheim when TJ Dillashaw or Henry Cejudo uh, has his hand raised after that. 